Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Pijan and Bala Ba, Idivar and Hadi. Jai go Pijan and Bala Ba, Idivar and Hadi. Yasodanandana. Vrta Janna Ranjana Yasoda Nandana Vrta Janna Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jai Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari Jai Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Mr. Pad Paramahansa Paduka Charja Astrotar the Fishima Divine Grace Shule Si Bhakti Vedanta Swami Bhopad Jai Is Khan BBT found with our Charja Shule Bhopad Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Paravrika Charja Ashtotar Tata Sri Srimad His Divine Grace Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thako Ki Jai Ananda Koti Vaishnava Bindu Ki Jai Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thako Ki Jai Kuntaraj Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Sama Veda Bhakti Bindu Ki Jai All Glory to the Assembled Devotees All Glory to the Assembled Devotees All Glory to the Assembled Devotees all glory to Sri Guru and Guranga. Okay. Narayanam Namaskritya Narangchayav Narottamam Devim Sadasutim Vyasam Tato Jai Mudiri before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, we should offer our respectful obeisances unto Lord Narayan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and to Nara Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, and to Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Srila Vyasadeva, the author, and unto Srila Prabhupada, the translator, commentator, and our spiritual master. Uh -oh. Hare Krishna. Nashta Prayesha Badreshu. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavat Yuttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki By regular attendance and classes on Srimad Bhagavatam and by rendering devotional service to the pure devotee, all that is inauspicious within the heart is destroyed almost to nil, and loving devotion to the Supreme Lord who is glorified in transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact. Okay. All right. Sorry. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. On this 23rd day of March 2020 in San Diego, 
We're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And we are reading from the fourth canto, The Creation of the Fourth Order. Chapter 23, Maharaj Pitu's Going Back Home, text number 8. Tena Kraman Siddhena Vastakarma Malashaya Pranayamai Sandhi Pranayamai Sandhi Rudha Sadbhargas Chinna Bandhanaha Tena Kraman Siddhena Dvasta karma malashaya pranayamai sandiradha sadbhargas chinna bandhana tena kumana siddhena dvasta karma malashaya pranayamai sandiradha Sadbhargas Chinna Bandhanaha Tena Kramana Siddhena Pasta Karma Malashaya Panayamai Sanirudha Sadbhargas Chinna Bandhanaha Tena Kramana Siddhena Vasta karma malashaya pranayamai sandirudha shadbhargas chinna bandhanaha tena thus by practicing such austerities krama gradually anu constantly siddhena by perfection dvasta smashed Karma, fruit of activities. Mala, dirty things. Ashayaha, desire. Pranayamai. But practice of pranayama yoga. Breathing exercises. Sun, being. Nirudha, stopped. Shat vargaha, the mind and the senses. Chinnabandhanaha, completely cut off from all bondage. Mukunda, can you pull those curtains for me? Thanks. Translation. By thus practicing severe austerities, Maharaj Prithu gradually became steadfast in spiritual life and completely free of all desires for a fruit of activities. He also practiced breathing exercises to control his mind and senses. And by such control, he became completely free from all desires for fruit of activity. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Purport. The word pranayamai is very important in this verse because the hatha yogis and ashtanga yogis practice pranayama, but generally they do not know the purpose behind it. The purpose of pranayama, or mystic yoga, is to stop the mind and senses from engaging in food of activities. The so-called yogis who practice in Western countries have no idea of this. The aim of pranayama is not to make the body strong and fit for working hard. The aim is worship of Krishna. In the previous verse, it was specifically mentioned that whatever austerity, pranayama, and mystic yoga practices Prithu Maharaj performed were performed for the sake of worshiping Krishna. Thus, Prithu Maharaj serves as a perfect example for yogis also. Whatever he did, he did to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. The minds of those who are addicted to fruit of activity are, fruit of activity are always filled with unclean desires. Fruit of activities are symptomatic of our polluted desire to dominate material nature. As long as one continues to be subject to polluted desires, he has to accept one material body after another. So-called yogis, without knowledge of the real purpose of yoga, practice it in order to keep the body fit. Thus they engage themselves in fruit of activities, and thus they are bound by desire to accept another body. 
They are not aware that the ultimate goal of life is to approach Krishna. In order to save such yogis from wandering throughout the different species of life, the Shastras warn that in this age, such yogic practice is simply a waste of time. The only means of elevation is the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. King Prithu's activities took place in Satya Yuga, and in this age, this practice of yoga is misunderstood by fallen souls who are not capable of practicing anything. Consequently, the Shastras enjoin, Kalau nastyeva 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 gatat anyata. The conclusion is that unless the karmis, jnanis, and yogis come to the point of devotional service to Lord Krishna, their so-called austerities and yoga have no value. Naradita. If Hari, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is not worshipped, there is no point in practicing meditational yoga, performing karma yoga, or culturing empiric knowledge. As far as pranayama is concerned, chanting of the holy name of the Lord and dancing in ecstasy are also considered pranayama. In a previous verse, Sanat Kumar instructed Maharaj Pitu to engage constantly in the service of the Supreme Lord Vasudev. Only by worshipping Vasudev can one become free from the desires of fruit of activities. Outside of worshipping Vasudev, the yogis and ganis cannot attain freedom from such desires. Then the rest of the verse. Tadvan harikta mata yo yata yo piruddha sroto ganas tamadanam bhajavasudevam Bhagavatam 4.22.39 Here the word pranayama does not refer to any ulterior motive. The actual aim is to strengthen the mind and senses in order to engage them in devotional service. In the present age, this determination can be very easily acquired simply by chanting the holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Om Jnana Timurandasya, Jnana Anjana Shalakaya, Chakshu Unmidatam Mena, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and all members of Sri Parampara. So having described the quite severe austerities and other practices of Maharaj Pritu, now the result is explained in this verse. And the result was that he became very steadfast in spiritual life and completely free of all desires for food of activities. So this is the kind of the coin of the realm in, in the practice of yoga. In other words, if whatever you're doing, whether it's hatha yoga or karma yoga, jnana yoga, bhakti yoga, uh, the, the uh, measure of your success, one measure of your success, one essential measure, is the gradual decrease and eventual elimination of material attachments, material desires, how, enjoying, if you're enjoying in this world. Um, because it's the age of Kali, everything becomes contaminated and polluted. And so even the traditional practices of yoga, such as Hatha Yoga, Ashtanga Yoga, uh, are turned around and nobody knows anything. And so they're uh, there's, uh, engaged in for material motives. I certainly, that's how I started yoga. I wanted to regain my health. And this was a fairly new process. I was interested in India. I read some things. And uh, so I searched that out. This is back in 69, 70. Uh, and I found a nice yoga ashram. As most of you know by now, it's run by the present Amala Bhakta in those days. And uh, it worked, you know. Now the other people there, uh, I just remember a lot of kind of overweight matrons, you know, the classic thing. And uh, they were all in it for the same reason. No one was there to decrease material desires or attain God. That wasn't even mentioned. Uh, Eventually, we, we got into chanting some things, and I, I learned a, 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 a Christian, my first Krishna mantra I learned there, although we didn't know what it meant. It was just sounds, and, uh, but somehow I was attracted to it. <laughs> uh, you probably may remember that you may recognize this mantra. Om abhavitro pravitro va sarva vastam kato biva yaksmare pandarin yaksham yagbhaya byam tara suchihi. That's the mantra you chant when you get initiated. It's for purification. Purification of what? Purification of material desires. That's one of the main things. 
But that wasn't uh, mentioned. But somehow or other, I was chanting that mantra a lot. Maybe that helped me uh, get attracted to Krishna. Uh, anyway, we see that in this age, this is Maharaj Prithu seems to be, I think, Satya Yuga. Uh, he's, he's practicing these severe austerities, uh, but he never forgot this essential verse that he got from the son of Kumar, <laughs> which probably refers here. Yat pada pankaja palasha valasa bhaktya. Pada pankaja, lotus feet, palasha is the toes, or that you have the the, the lotuses of the feet, and then you have the petals of the lotus, the petals of the toes. Vilasa bhaktya, by enjoying spiritual pleasure of serving the lotus feet of Krishna. Karmashayam, the, the desire for fruit of activities and the results of fruit of activities, sense gratification, are like knots, gratitam, but they're udgratayanti, they're untied or cut for the santas, for the saints, for the devotees. This is a, a very concise. On the other hand, tadvan na riktamatayo, for those who are devoid, whose minds are devoid of, of bhakti, they may be the yogis, they may be the out and out karmis, whatever, uh, whatever category they're in, if their minds are devoid of bhakti, and even though they struggle very hard, yet they are rudhas roto ganas, their minds are eventually uh, blocked uh, by the flow of material desires. In other words, even the, even the greatest yogis who are impersonalists, they may, by severe austerities, as we've heard uh, Prita Maharaj practicing here, uh, suppress the senses and transcend the material uh, plane and attain what, what we call Brahma Bhutta, but it's not real Brahma Bhutta because in Bhagavad Gita, so that results in bhakti. But it's a transcendental plane beyond the variegated nature of spirit. Their, their senses are uh, under control. Uh, but they don't, they don't have any bhakti. And so there's still uh, desires in, in the heart for engagement, for sense gratification. You can only suppress it so long. And eventually they come down. The, the word kritrena is exactly what we've been hearing of Maharaj Pritu. Kritrena means the severe austerities that we can't even you know, conceive of. It was, it was uh, mentioned here. The eating, you know. Uh, he eats some bark of trees, you know. I didn't even say trees, tree trunks. You know, I guess there are certain tree trunks that are edible. I don't know. Somehow or other, he's eating tree trunks. Fruit has fallen from the leaves. It was a big you know, item on the menu. And, uh, you know, gradually he stopped doing that. And eventually he was just breathing, living on breathing. Even today, there are people who claim that they can live on air. Did you ever see that? Breatharians. Of course, it's all just to you know, purify. And, you know, there's not, nothing about God realization. So... Uh, but ultimately, you know, he, at the same time, he's worshiping Krishna. He's not forgetting that. Because the last, last uh, words here, Bhaja Vasudevam, this is, this is Sanat Kumar, he said, there, this imperative, you should worship Vasudev. And then you'll be free of material desires. So in, with all of these austerities, after all, he was the king, he was the emperor of the world, you know, he was doing all of these different things. So they generally uh, have to associate with a lot of material things and develop material desires. So he was, he was simultaneously purifying himself by these austerities as well as by his bhakti. And he was successful. Now Prabhupada mentions the word naradita in here. I'm, I, I'm assuming none of you recognize the verse that that word comes from. Maybe you do. But Prabhupada would often quote this verse and it's impertinent because it has to do with austerities and things. It says, Aradito yadi hadist basata takkam. Does this ring a bell? Huh? No, 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 no. That, that's just the first line of the verse. Ramapati, you don't recognize? Aradito yadhidis. He knows. Yeah. Uh, so, so it's, it's a very interesting verse. Aradito yadhidis to basata takkim. Naradito, which he quotes, yadhidis to basata takkim. Andarbahis yadhidis to basata takkim. Nandarbahis yadhidis to basata takkim. So, this is kind of a, a uh, Sanskrit idiom. You find a similar uh, verse. Uh, or usage in the Krishna Karnamrita. I forget the Sanskrit right now. Bhajan Maharaj likes this verse. Uh, My dear Lord, if I have your mercy, what use are others? Mercy. And if I don't have your, your mercy, what use are others? Mercy. See? So the same thing. So it says, Aradito yadi hadis. 
to Basar time. Out, if you're worshipping Hari, what's the use of performing severe austerities? You're already there. And if you're not worshipping Hari, what's the use of your performing austerities? You're, you're, it's like you're just uh, wasting your time. If you're seeing Hari within and without, what's the use of performing austerities? You're already there. And if you're not seeing Hari, if that's not the goal of your austerities, then what's the use of it? Yeah, that's, that's the idea. So Prabhupada, he just quotes the first uh, the translation, the first line. If Hari, the Supreme Lord, is not worshipped, there's no point in practicing meditation or yoga, performing karma yoga, culturing empiric knowledge. So this is why the Bhagavatam uh, is the Bhagavatam, because everything, every passage, you may not see it. If you just read one or two uh, verses about Pritu here, perfecting austerities, you don't know really what the purpose is, what the goal is. Uh, but it always comes back to bhakti, every, everything. The fifth canto with the description of the universes and everything, it always comes it's in the context of Krishna, and his avatars, and his, and his devotees, and the process of devotional service, and all of that. That's why the Bhagavatam is the Bhagavatam. You remember it was written by Vyasadeva after he wrote all these other books, including the, the Vedas. The Vedas, the first three Vedas, are often used, you know, consulted for karma kanda, for elevation to higher planets. Uh, Krishna mentioned that, that, that there are class, uh, what is it, yami mam pushpitam bhacham prabhadam javipashtadaha. Those who aren't wise, the vipashtadaha, they think that uh, the Vedas are meant for ultimate fruit of gain. Uh, flowery language describing the uh, Nanda Nanda the gardens and so many cities you can develop in all Veda Vara Rata Pata Nanya Nastiti Vara. They say there's nothing more than this. Veda Vara Rata. There's so called followers of the Vedas. Of, of the, uh, Vedas. Kamat Nana Svarga Para, going to heaven. Janma karma palapradam, looking for the fruits of uh, good birth and activity. Kriya vishesha baholam, elaborate sacrifices before him. Uh, Kriya vishesha baholam, bogai shraya gatim pati. Bogai shraya gatim pati, for the goal of uh, enjoyment and wealth to enjoy, you know, bogai shraya. And the very next verse is really an important verse for us, right in the second chapter there. Maybe some of you know it, you can chant along. Bogai shraya prasaktana. Now, this verse has this word vivasayatmakabudhi in it, which harkens back a few verses to a verse in the second chapter that Prabhupada really emphasized because of the commentary by Vishnu Chakravarti. So, what this word says is, Bhogaishwarya prasaktanam tayapudhi. Those who are too much attached to material opulence and enjoyment, and who, whose minds are bewildered by such things, cannot attain the firm determination to practice devotional service. Become absorbed in, in devotional service. And so this is a, this is a, a constant uh, threat, really, for those who are trying to progress in devotional service. Because, obviously, if you, if you practice seriously, especially in ashram life, the whole uh, progress is predicated on your accepting certain austerities. Not the same ones that Pritu did, but certain austerities that in this age are thought to be uh, nuts. You know, giving up your hair. Not my hair, you know. <laughs> That's such a big deal, you know, shaving up. And you saw someone shaved up, you said, oh, this person is making a big step forward. Because the hair is such a thing you know, people are, for attracting the opposite sex. It's just a given. Right, that you're going to have this hair. So, but that's, that's you know, just one step in, in the, the idea of, well, okay, we're cutting off, we're trying to bank the fire of, of, of material attachment, but at the same time engaging in, in so many things to make us attached to Krishna, beginning with chanting and dancing. Prabhupada says here that this is a kind of pranayama. I remember reading that because I used to practice pranayama. Even in, in the ashram, I would find a secret room and practice my pranayama. Because I had practiced Hatha Yoga for several years before I joined, you know. So, and there is a place for it. It's mentioned in the Hari Bhakti Vilas. Quiet the mind for, so you can chant Hare Krishna better. So you can focus on the mind. So that's not, even, even there's, a, there's a, uh, uh, a pastime where Prabhupada is taking a morning walk in India. I think Bombay area somewhere. And uh, they pass somebody on, on the side of the road, and he's standing on his head. 
And the, the devotees immediately like, probably we don't, we don't do anything like that. I said, well, you should try it sometime. It's pretty healthy, you know. <laughs> in other words, there, there is a place for these things in, within the context of devotional service. Just like Prabhupada would take his morning walk. You know how the morning walk started? You know, the, you know the, the pastor? Prabhupada had a stroke at the end of May in 1967. He'd returned to New York. And it was, in those days, the um, Memorial Day was the last day of the month, no matter, what, no matter what day it landed on. Whereas now, it's the last Monday of the month, you know? Last Monday after the first um, uh, Sunday. In other words, it can't be the first. first uh, there has to be. The, anyways, it's near the end of the month. So there's always an extended weekend there. But here, you know, it happened then, and, and they couldn't find a doctor. You know, finally, uh, they found a doctor. And, and I think Prabhupada had come out of the hospital, but he was still confined. But... Um, they couldn't find a doctor, so you know, calling this one, calling, and finally found this one guy who was still working on the weekend, on, on the Memorial Day. And he came in, and he first was looking at all the devotees, you know, and he's thinking they were hippies, you know, whatever. This is the way I think Brahmananda described. And uh, I think he was the one who said, oh, he prays too much, all right? Uh, yeah, and then, and, then he, and then he didn't, you know, gave some, but he said he should get some exercise, he should get some more exercise, you know. And Prabhupada took that seriously. You know, the devotees more or less ushered the doctor out. He wasn't helping. And so from then on, he would religiously take that morning walk. Even if he's, you know, it's snowing outside in his Switzerland, he would walk in the hotel or something. You know, he would religiously take that walk. So Prabhupada is, you know, using the, that principle. It's a, it's a good principle. Has to get exercise. Because, you know, he's always sitting, sitting, sitting and, and writing. So that... Um, is not, you know, physically so healthy. So this pranayama, uh, there is even a place for it. We don't practice it in, in Hari Bhakti Vilas for householders, you know, to calm the mind, so many things so that they can chant. But uh, Prabhupada makes the point, if you can chant and dance, that's always, a, <laughs> that's, that's part of it. Uh, then there's a certain regulation of the breathing already, you know, with that. So that's, you know, everything, everything, is, everything is subsumed under this, this uh, practice for the age, because this age, you can't, there's no question of these austerities. Just like, you know, we have some of that in the Gita, in the sixth chapter, where it's, you know, this, Krishna gives a little outline there, you know, going alone, strict brahmacharya, find a place, sacred place, uh, not too high, not too low, sitting this way, you know, and then practice pranayama, breathing, and you know, control the mind. So, but Arjun rejects it. And Prabhupada makes the point, whenever he discusses this, Arjun wouldn't, you know, practice it, wouldn't accept it. It's too difficult. Then what to speak of us? There's an art, in, in, in English we have the same thing, logic. But in Sanskrit it's very uh, prominent. You give an example of uh, something that's more extreme, and you say, what to speak of the, the thing that you're talking about? So if Arjun rejected it, and he's so much more qualified than we are, he's a personal uh, friend of Krishna, he lived a thousand years ago, or he lived uh, so long ago that average age a thousand years. Uh, uh, what to speak of us? If he rejected it, then it's silly for us to try to practice it, and it's not necessary. It's not necessary. You know, and Krishna describes in the next chapter, it's so interesting in, in the context of the Sankirtan movement. He says, well, if your mind is attracted to all of the sense gratification, actually you have, have to have some means of controlling it. But if your mind can be attracted to Krishna, and that, he said, now I'm going to give you a practice, practice, process by which your mind can be attracted to me. That's after, that's the first verse of the seventh chapter. Maya sakta mana parta yogam yujan manashiya asangshiyang samangurmam hita gyasati tachanu. So, so you see the logic there. If your mind is out of control, you know, you may be sitting there anywhere, but you're thinking of this, thinking of that, does she love me or not, you know, uh, th then you're failing in your yoga. <laughs> but if your mind can be filled with the thoughts of the all-attractive personality of Godhead, then you don't need to be sitting, you know, or practicing austerities. The austerities are not necessary. Naradito yadhiris. So, or aradito yadhiris. So that's what we start with the seventh chapter. And he begins, you know, he goes through the whole thing of how you can see me, 
in your, your daily experiences, the taste of water, light of the sun and the moon. And that way you can gradually you know, become more conscious of me. So in the 12th chapter is the same thing. You know, he's, the, the ideal is fix your mind on me. I just read it this morning. This is the best yogi. The best yoga is fix your mind on me. Uh, and endowed with, with strong transcendental faith. That's the best yoga. The faith means that you believe in, in Krishna, in his blessings, in everything that we read. That's the best. Uh, but if you can't do that, then practice the principles that come to that state of desiring me. The whole thing is desire, which he's talking about here. And if you can't do that, then at least work for me. And you come to... You know. And if you can't even do that, then at least don't be a selfish, you know, s- uh, uh, egotistical person. You give away, you know, uh, your, the fruits of your labor to a good cause like that. And, uh, and then he comes back to the, to the whole thing. It's only 20 verses, but the whole ideal is there. So the, so the question is, how do we apply that in today's age? Krishna is speaking at the end of the Dwapara Yuga. He mentions chanting, you know, satatam kirti yantoma. The Prabhupada likes, he focuses on that verse. But the, the teachings of Lord Chaitanya, who's also Krishna, are centered on this practice of chanting. Everything is subsumed in there. Your austerities, your detachment, your progress, your uh, cultivation of attraction to Krishna. It's all there within the hearing and chanting of the holy name and other vibrations that uh, have directly to do with Krishna, Bhagavatam and so many other things. A writing articles Prabhupada really wanted us to write. That's chanting. So that, that, uh, then you don't need to practice severe austerities. You must practice some austerities as are given, those that are prescribed you know, for regular principles and for those who are serious, getting up early, which is like a super austerity you know, uh, for some. And other things that will keep you on the right path because Maya is always very insidious and we're not very strong in this age. So we're easily uh, affected by these things. So, so this is a, a, a wonderful passage describing that. And I was thinking as I read this, because I, I, I was reviewing some of it before, and uh, it describes how he went out there with his wife. You know, this was alone. But she's not mentioned in all these austerities here. But then at the end, she is. <laughs> she's doing the same things. What is it? You know, she's doing the same thing. At the end, I guess the, the supreme austerity inconceivable for a chaste wife was entering into the fire. He does that. And then, you know, all of the ladies, demigoddesses and everyone, they're dancing and throwing down flowers at Archie. So she also gets the benefit. But, the, you know, what we're getting to this is that uh, this, this idea, the minds of those who are addicted to food of activity are always filled with unclean desires. And this is what we're, we're facing today. You know, this is what this world is. And you can see the result. You know, how did all this come about, this, this madness of the, the, the coronavirus? Uh, you know, the unspeakable practices that they're, un, that they're practicing in China. Not that, that America's so great killing all these cows, that's going on everywhere. But, you know, eating all kinds of animals and, you know, whatever. Uh, it's just, this is, this is mass karma that's going on. And America, which is just, uh, you know, that's striding over the earth with a big empire, $800 billion of, you know, uh, so-called defense budget every year. We have uh, military bases throughout the world. You may not even know that, you know. And uh, the whole thing is, ca- you know, calculating how can we extract the oil, how can we make more money, how can we profit more. It's demonic. It's totally demonic. And... Uh, so you can see this as this mass karma to just you know, bring people back to reality. I mean, we know, you know, we're taught from day one, birth, old age, disease, and death. This is the reality. And, and material life is a, is a constant eff- effort to, to forget that, to push it into the background. We, yeah, 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 we know that, I mean, theoretically, but let's enjoy now. We can, you know, well, therefore, let's enjoy as much sense gratification as possible. There's a, you know, you only go around once in life, therefore you should grab a beer. There was, back in the you know, early days, that was one. And that's the philosophy, YOLO, you know. So, so, but you can see, people have no idea how to cope with this. You know, the fear is, is practically, you can cut it with a knife, you know, you walk out on the street. Uh, so that's one of the things that Krishna consciousness helps you overcome. 
I mean, that's practical. It's completely practical. If you're convinced you're not the body and you're focusing on service to Krishna and you believe, you know, you have faith in the philosophy, you understand, okay, well, we're going to go through this and, and nobody's dying. You know, everybody's going on to another life. But, uh, I, you know, I, I, I'm going to practice Krishna consciousness as tensely as, as, as possible and, you know, and, and if, if it comes, it comes, you know, and we'll hopefully have someone, you know, devotees chanting with us when we leave this body. I mean, coronavirus or no coronavirus, we're all headed toward that. Maybe to get my age, it's not, you know, you can say, well, okay, we only got a couple of years left if I got that. So there, therefore, you know, let's refine our devotional service. Let's get serious, kick out any um, uh, vestigial, uh, des- you know, material desires that are still holding us back. I mean, that's, that's what serious devotees are. That's what this Vyavasayat Makabuddhi is. I wanted to mention that. That's Bhogai Shroya Pasaktanam. This is a verse that <laughs> is, is, you know, critical for us. If we're too attached to material, material sense gratification and wealth, then you can't get that determination to perform the austerities necessary, you know, for practicing devotional service seriously. So, and you can't get uh, that Vavasyat Makabuti. Now, two verses earlier, Prabhupada mentions this, uh, and he quotes this verse, and he says, and Vishnu Chakrabarti Thakur has give, given a wonderful purport, and this obviously inspired Prabhupada so much. And that is that real Vyavasayat Makabuti means the determination to, you know, to kick out all distractions and practice devotional service seriously, means to accept the the order of the spiritual master is one's life and soul. You know, to take that as everything. And he quotes Vishnu Chakrabarti, you know, in that purport there. And uh, that obviously informed Prabhupada's whole mission. Why, you know, we heard this morning how some of his god brothers were also given the same mission and so much support. But when Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati left this world, the whole mission got dissolved. Because they didn't follow his orders, establish a GBC, and keep preaching and so forth. You know, everything became uh, clouded and polluted by personal desire. So Prabhupada uh, didn't follow that. Obviously, you know, he kept that desire strong and throughout all those years in India. When he was trying to do it in India, he made some headway, but really not. You know, and this and that. Finally, he took sannyas. He said, "Oh, I thought I was." aghast, and I thought it was the horror, most horrible thing. Bhaktisiddhanta kept coming in the dream, you know. Finally accepted the advice. I think Keshava Maharaj advised him, you know. Uh, Bhakti Pragyan Keshava. So, that's a wonderful history. But the, but the central fact is, he never lost that thread of that, that order, you know, that the instruction to preach in English and preach abroad, take it around the world, you know. That's Lord Chaitanya's prediction, his Bhaktivinoda's desire, is not my desire. So, uh, and he was successful, ultimately successful. So that's to, to retain that because sometimes it requires, you know, unimaginable things. I mean, in those early days of this movement, there were so many devotees who accepted that. You know, Prabhupada was uh, traveling everywhere. He was giving so much instruction, so many letters, you know, so accessible. And devotees would do amazing things. I remember... Who is it? What was his name? Shivananda? Not Shivananda. Yeah. Was it Shivananda? Yeah, Shivananda. He was in Philadelphia when I came there, went there. He, he had come back from Germany. But, you know, to, he, somehow or other he spoke German. You know, maybe learned it in high school or something. So, uh, Prabhupada said, oh, you should start a temple in Germany. So off he went. Alone. You know, to Hamburg, I think. What, what to do? Well, you do what you what you know, go on the street, chant, you know, try to get a few interested people, invite them back to the place you're renting, you know. I mean, can you imagine it? You'd go alone, and the same thing. That it, we had a, we used to have a center in uh, where is it? Not Taos, New Mexico, Santa Fe, I think. There was a devotee went to. I think that was Toshan, who eventually became prominent in New York and Elatra's teaching. Anyway, that, you know, that was, that was examples. They may have, you know, not maintained it their whole lives, which is glorious, but uh, to feel empowered and feel so surrendered that you can do things. I was just re- watching the, these videos, these uh, follow, uh, following Srila Prabhupada videos. They're wonderful. He has 
so much footage, and then he has he went around. This was years ago. Some of those devotees are no longer with us, and he had them narrate because they were in the in the video. You know, you look up Brahmananda and Bhavananda, and he's, and wonderful remembrances. So this the 1970 Ratha You may have seen it. We're probably actually when he gets out of the car, he starts dancing. <laughs> so. Uh, Gohari's on there. I, I knew Gohari when I joined. He was in the Brooklyn Temple and he was running, uh, I think, the incense business. He was helping with that because he had good, you know, Vaisha sense. But he said, uh, I was assigned to oversee the cooking for thousands and thousands of people. I'd never done anything like that. <laughs> and he said, those were the days where we could climb the Mount Everest to Prabhadesas, you know. <laughs> you have, you know, youthful, you have all the energy, you know and intelligence. And if you bring that to bear, you know, and, and you, you see the video, all these plates going out, big barrels of, you know, thing, everyone's taking the plate, you know, thousands, thousands and thousands. Who can imagine? I can't even imagine what to do first and something like that. So, so that, that's the, the, you know, the spiritual energy that can move mountains, that can create amazing things uh, in our personal sadhana, as well as uh, for the movement. And it's still going on. So that, that comes from uh, full surrender and uh, acceptance of uh, various austerities. And, you know, the experience of finding out, oh, when you do that, then you also experience more intense bliss and ecstasy. You know, that there's, you, have, you have no other shelter, so you're constantly taking shelter of Krishna, you know, calling out either internally or externally. So that's, that, that is, the, is what we do today that answers, what, you know, in, in relation to what Prithu did. You know, he worked, and it doesn't mention how long this was, it must have been some months, you know, from going out and finally uh, becoming completely pure and going back to Godhead, which I think is coming in a few verses. But uh, for us, uh, this, the same principle is there, but the method is, is, is tailored for our capacities. But it still requires... Uh, Vigilance, that Vyavasayatmika, Buddhi, and the, uh, the surrender, you know, to the order of Guru and Shastra, like that. Okay, I'm going to read this translation again, and then if there's any discussion. By thus practicing severe austerities, Maharaj Prithu gradually became steadfast in spiritual life and completely free of all desires for food of activities. He also practiced breathing exercises to control his mind and senses, and by such control, he became completely free from all desires for food of activity. Any discussion on these points? Chinna bandana, all the bonds were cut. We want to, what's that verse? Anasakta sibhishayan yataham upayunjada nirbanda kusha sambande yuktam bayaragimuchite. The real de detachment is what we're talking about. Vairagya. Vairagya means detachment. Uh, renunciation also involves detachment often, often, but renunciation can be just tiaga, just giving it up and staying attached. You know, you're still working on the attachment. But vairagya really is what we're looking for. You know, even in the middle of uh, so many temptations, you're not attracted. You see how strong that is, how important that is, because you're attracted to Krishna. So this verse says. Anasakta Sibishayan, without being attached to the object of the senses to engage them where, where appropriate in the service of Krishna, one loses one's attraction for the objects and becomes attached to Krishna. This is Yukta Vairagya, which is what we're after. Any? No microphone? I'll, re I'll repeat it. Okay. Uh, the question was why? Why in the uh, Bhagavad Gita, and I think Bhagavatam mentioned, it's also in Chai Vidya, what is it? How is it? Chai? Yeah, no, no, that's something else. Uh, no, this is the ninth chapter where he's saying the followers of the three Vedas yeah. worship me, drink the Soma juice, and go to uh, uh, material heaven. Uh, those, the first three, Sama, uh, Rig, and Yajur, that's where you, where you find the, uh, the, the, all the detailed instructions on Karmakanda. 
The atarva is some, I'm not so well versed, you know, in all this, but the atarva has some other function. It has uh, some other things in there. So uh, those are the ones that are studied in great detail for those who are saying, okay, you know, let's practice these sacrifices and we'll go to the heaven. That's why you find the, the tree, you know, you have the tree Vedis. Isn't the tree Vedis a common? You know? There was Chaturvedis, yeah. <laughs> Chaturvedis are a little more broadly understood. All glories to the Prabhupada.